Hello, children, and welcome to Storytime with Winnie and Nan. This is Winnie, and I'm Nan, and we'd like to welcome you. Today, the stories that we're going to read are all about the season of fall. Some people say autumn or fall, it's the same thing. So the stories that we're going to read are all going to talk about things that you do and things that you can enjoy during the fall. And the crafts that we're going to do, for the crafts that we're going to do, these are the items that you'll need to ask your grown-up to gather for you. We're going to be making a fall tree, a jack-o'-lantern, and a scarecrow. And the things you'll need to gather are four sheets of paper, one paper plate, some crayons, some markers, some clear tape, a scissors, and some cotton swabs. So I hope you'll enjoy those crafts and I hope you'll enjoy the books that I brought to share with you today. The first book that we're going to read today is called Let's Look at Fall. And the author of this book is Sarah Schwett. Let's Look at Fall by Sarah Schwett. It's fall. How do you know it's fall? A cool breeze blows. The weather is colder. Leaves change color. They flutter to the ground. The sun sets earlier. Fall days are shorter than summer days. Animals in fall. What do animals do in fall? Squirrels rush around. They gather nuts to store for the winter. Birds fly south. They look for warmer weather. Bears search for a place to hibernate. Their fur coats grow thicker. Plants in fall. What happens to the plants in fall? Ripe apples fill the orchards. They're ready to be picked. Corn ripens in the field. It's ready to be harvested. What's next? The temperature grows cold. Fall is over. What season is next? Do you know what season is next? It's winter. Our next story, children, is called Fletcher and the Falling Leaves by Julia Rawlinson. And this is a story about a little fox named Fletcher and his friend, Tree. Fletcher and the Falling Leaves by Julia Rawlinson. The world was changing. Each morning, when Fletcher bounded out of the den, everything seemed just a little, dif little bit different. The rich green of the forest was turning to a dusty gold, and the soft, swishing sound of summer was fading to a crinkly whisper. Fletcher's favorite tree looked dull, dry, and brown. Fletcher was beginning to get worried. I think my tree is sick, said Fletcher. What's wrong with it, his mother asked. Its leaves are turning brown, said Fletcher. Don't worry, it's only autumn, she said. Fletcher ran back to his tree and patted the rough bark. 
Don't worry, it's only autumn, he said. You'll be feeling better soon. But the tree didn't get better. Each day, more leaves turned brown. One morning, the wind blew a small leaf off of a branch. Fletcher jumped up and caught it very gently in his paw. Don't worry, tree. I've got your leaf. I'll fix it. Fletcher looked around, picked a piece of grass, and carefully tied the leaf to a branch. Just then, another gust of wind ruffled Fletcher's fur. The little leaf shook itself free and fluttered back to the ground. Fletcher picked it up again and thought very hard. Then he poked the leaf onto a twig and pushed it down firmly. Now you hold tight, said Fletcher. No more flying around. The little leaf gave a tiny rustle in reply. The next day, a strong wind was blowing through the forest. Fletcher rushed out of the den and ran all the way to his tree. Lots of branches were bare, and little lost leaves spun everywhere. Don't worry, tree. I'll catch them for you. I promise. Round and round and round whirled Fletcher after the swirling leaves. Leaves, wonderful, just what I need for my nest, said a squirrel. But these belong to the tree, said Fletcher. Don't take them away. The tree doesn't need them anymore, said the squirrel, bounding off. Help, help, the wind and the squirrel are stealing our leaves, cried Fletcher. Leaves, terrific, just what I need to keep warm, said a porcupine rolling around. But these belong to the tree, said Fletcher, plucking leaves from the porcupine's needle. Not anymore, snuffled the porcupine, and away he rolled. Help, help! The wind, the squirrel, and the porcupine are stealing our leaves, cried Fletcher. Suddenly, a flock of friendly birds swooped down from the sky. They picked up the leaves in their beaks and poked them into the tree's branches. Soon the tree was leafy again, and Fletcher flopped down and smiled. Thank you, birds, thank you, he gasped as the birds fluttered away. He lay looking up through the leaves at the sky and drifted off to sleep. But the wind continued to blow, and the branches still danced. The leaves shivered and shook themselves and began to wiggle free. They tossed and turned and twitched and twirled and tumbled to the ground. They brushed Fletcher's ears and nose and filled his dreams with a whispering sound. When Fletcher finally woke up, he couldn't believe his eyes. Instead of a roof of dancing leaves, all he could see were bare branches against the sky. Oh, tree, I am so sorry, gulped Flesher. All your leaves are gone. But then he saw high in the branches one small leaf still holding on. I won't let the wind steal that one, said Fletcher, and he began to climb. He crawled among the last leaf and held it firmly onto its branch. All day long, the wind blew, the branch bounced, and Fletcher held tight. I'll stay with you, Leaf, he said. Don't worry. But then, with a sudden whoosh of wind, the branch bounced high. With a plip, the leaf let go and fluttered like a little flag clutched in Fletcher's paw. 
Fletcher looked sadly at the leaf he had promised to save. He carried it carefully down the tree and back to the den. He made a cozy little bed for it and gently tucked it in. But all night long he could only think of his tree, all on its own. At dawn, Fletcher tiptoed outside. The wind had finally stopped blowing and the air was cold. The moon still hung in the clear sky and pale stars glimmered. As he came to his favorite tree, Fletcher saw a magical sight. The tree was hung with a thousand icicles, shining silver in the early light. You are more beautiful than ever, whispered Fletcher, but are you all right? A tiny breeze shivered the branches and making a sound like laughter. And in the light of the rising sun, the sparkling branches nodded. Fletcher gave his tree a hug, and then he went back to his den for a nice warm breakfast. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is we want to make the ground. So we'll take our brown crayon and we'll make the ground at the bottom of our picture. Take your brown crayon. Okay, now we're going to make the trunk of the tree. And we're just going to make two lines coming up like this. Another line the same way on that side. And that's the trunk of our tree. Now to make the branches, we're just going to make some straight lines coming up. And those are the branches of our tree. Then coming off the big branches, we'll make little branches just like this. And now we'll have our tree. But the tree doesn't have any pretty fall leaves. So the next thing we have to do is put on our pretty fall leaves. So we're going to take one of our cotton swabs. And the first color leaf I'm going to put on is my red leaves. So I'm going to take my cotton swab and I'm going to get some of the ink from my marker and put it on the tip of my cotton swab. And then I'm going to take my swab and I'm going to make dots all over my tree. So there are my red leaves. So then I can cap that one. The next color I'm going to use is I'm going to make my orange leaves. So I'm going to take my marker and my cotton swab and I'm going to make orange leaves on my tree. So here I go. I'm going to make those orange dots all over the place on my tree. And my tree is becoming a very colorful fall tree now. And sometimes I even notice when I'm looking at the fall leaves that some of them are so dark that they almost look purple. So I'm going to put a little bit of purple to make my tree very colorful. I'm going to put some purple leaves in there. There. And the last color I'm going to put is green because not all the leaves turn at the same time. So sometimes when we look at our fall trees we still see some green leaves. So I'm going to use my green marker and I'm going to put some of those leaves that haven't turned yet on my tree. And there you go. Now I can take my brown crayon again and I can color in the trunk of my tree. And there you have your fall tree, just like the one in Fletcher and the Falling Leaves. Our next story is Apples and Pumpkins by Anne Rockwell. And this is a story about a family that goes apple picking and pumpkin picking. Apples and Pumpkins by Anne Rockwell. When red and yellow leaves are on the trees, 
we go to the Comstock farm to pick apples and pumpkins. Mr. Comstock gives us a bushel basket to put our apples in. Geese and chickens and a big fat turkey walk with us on our way to the orchard where the apples grow. My father picks apples. My mother does too. I climb into a little apple tree and pick the reddest apples of all. When our basket is full of red and shiny apples, We go to the field where the pumpkins grow. I look and look until I find the best pumpkin of them all. My father cuts it from the vine. I carry it back to the car. At home, we carve a jack-o'-lantern face on a big orange pumpkin. We put a candle inside and light it. Now our pumpkin looks scary and funny too. On Halloween night, we put our pumpkin on the doorstep. My mother gives away lots of our red and shiny apples for trick-or-treat. while I go trick-or-treating up and down our street. This book is called From Seed to Pumpkin by Wendy Pfeffer. And this is a story that tells us all about how pumpkins grow. From Seed to Pumpkin by Wendy Pfeffer. When spring winds warm the earth, a farmer plants hundreds of pumpkin seeds. Every pumpkin seed can become a baby pumpkin plant. Underground, covered with dark, moist soil, the baby plants begin to grow. As the plants get bigger, the seeds crack open. Stems sprout up, roots dig down. Inside the roots are tubes. Water travels up these tubes the way juice goes up a straw. In less than two weeks from planting time, green shoots poke up through the earth. These shoots grow into tiny seedlings. Two leaves called seed leaves uncurl on each stem and they reach up towards the sun. Sunlight gives these leaves energy to make food. Like us, plants need food to grow. But green plants do not eat food like we do. Their leaves make it. To make the food, plants need light, water, and air. Leaves catch the sunlight. And the roots soak up the rainwater. And little openings in the leaves let the air in. Using energy from the sun, the leaves mix the air with the water from the soil to make sugar, and this feeds the plant. Pumpkin plants don't stand up tall. As their stems grow longer, they sprawl all over the ground. But before long, twisted, tangled vines cover the pumpkin patch. Soon, flower buds appear on the vines. After each bud opens, its orange petals grow bigger and bigger, and they look like bright orange umbrellas. During the heat of the day, the flowers close. They open again during the cool nights and the early mornings. The bright orange flowers attract swarms of bees, and the bees buzz about, carrying the yellow pollen from the male flowers to the female flowers. Now the pumpkins can grow. 
The petals wither away. Where the flowers bloomed, tiny hard fruits begin to grow. Hundreds of these cling to the vines. As the days grow hot, all summer the warm sun and the cool rain help the tiny fruits grow larger and larger. Soon summer is over. The corn stalks next to the pumpkin patch turn brown. Leaves on the trees turn red, orange, and yellow. Pumpkins change color too. As they ripen, they change from green to yellow to orange. In just four months, small, flat, white pumpkin seeds have grown into big, fat, orange pumpkins. The pumpkins are ripe and round with lumps and bumps. They come in all sizes and shapes, and they are waiting in the autumn sun. Some pumpkins will be carved into jack-o'-lanterns for Halloween. Some pumpkins will be baked into pumpkin pies. Colorful leaves turn brown. Winter winds begin to blow, and soon the trees are bare, and the farmer looks out over the pumpkin patch where only a few vines remain. For this craft, you'll need one of your pieces of paper, you'll need your lunch bag, your brown lunch bag, and your crayons, your scissors, and some clear tape. So to start, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our piece of paper and we're going to cut out the hat for the scarecrow. So the first thing is to just make a triangle. We can use one of the corners of our paper and just draw a line across from one side to the other and that makes a triangle. So I'm going to cut out the triangle with my scissors and if you need help you can ask your grown-up to help you with the scissors. So there's our scarecrow's hat. Then we need to make our scarecrow's little whiskers. So again with my scissors I'm just going to cut out some strips of paper. And I'm going to cut out six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay. I'm going to collect these and we're going to tape those on after. So the first thing we can do is take our hat and we can tape it onto the front. And you want the flap of your paper bag to be in the front so we can make his mouth. So we're going to take our scarecrow's hat and we can put it right there and we can turn this over and tape it from the back. We can tape on our scarecrow's hat. And then we can put another little piece of tape in the front as well to keep it on there. There. So there we have our scarecrow's hat. So, and I put a little decoration on there. So if you want to do that with me, we can put, I put a little flower on his hat just to make it kind of fancy. So you can do that if you wish. Make a little flower. And then I put the stem of the flower with a couple of leaves it's just to make his hat a little bit fancy. So let's make our scarecrow's face. And I gave my scarecrow blue eyes. So I'm going to give my scarecrow blue eyes. There's one and two. And then with my brown crayon, I'm going to give him some, or her, him or her, some eyelashes. There you go. Then I used my crayon to give my scarecrow a nose. I drew a triangle nose. 
And then I have a happy scarecrow. I'm going to give my scarecrow a smiley face. And I started on the top here and I went down and then back up on the top. And then, because it's sort of like a puppet, I lifted this and I made my scarecrow's tongue inside. And I just made a U and I colored it in. So you can see your scarecrow's tongue. So there we finished the face. Then I made my scarecrow a little bit fancy. I gave my scarecrow a bow. So I made a circle in the middle here. And then I just made the sides of the bow. I colored that in. And then I made some buttons down the front. I gave my scarecrow three buttons. And there you go. So now I have my whiskers. And these whiskers are too long. So I'm going to pile them up. And I'm just going to cut them so that they're all the same length. And now I can lift this. And I can put, I can lift the flap of the paper bag and put the whiskers inside. And then I'm going to tape them. So I can put those in this side. There we go. I'm going to take some of my clear tape. tape those in and then I can do the same thing on the other side and lift this put them in get my tape and tape them in and there you go and if you want to make them shorter you can certainly make them shorter too and you end up with a little scarecrow puppet that you can put your hand inside and you have a little scarecrow puppet. Henry and Mudge Under the Yellow Moon by Cynthia Ryland. And this book is a story about a little boy named Henry and his dog Mudge and their Halloween adventure. Henry and Mudge under the Yellow Moon by Cynthia Ryland. Together in the Fall. In the fall, Henry and his big dog Mudge took long walks in the woods. Henry loved looking at the tops of the trees. He liked the leaves orange, yellow, brown, and red. Mudge loved sniffing at the ground, and he liked the leaves too. He always ate a few. In the fall, Henry liked counting the birds flying south. Mudge liked watching for busy chipmunks. Since one was a boy and the other was a dog, they never did things just the same way. Henry picked apples, and Mudge licked apples. Henry put on a coat, and Mudge grew one. And when the fall wind blew, Henry's ears turned red, and Mudge's ears turned inside out. But one thing about them was the same. In the fall, Henry and Mudge liked being together most of all. Henry and Mudge Under the Yellow Moon Henry loved Halloween. He loved to make jack-o'-lanterns. He loved to make paper bats. And most of all, he loved to dress up. But there was one thing about Halloween Henry did not like, ghost stories. 
and Henry's mother loved to tell ghost stories. Every Halloween, she put on her witch's hat. She lit candles and told ghost stories. She thought Henry liked them because he told her he liked them. But really, he hated them. They scared him. He was afraid to tell her that. But this year, Henry had Mudge. Mudge would be with him. Henry would not be afraid of the ghost stories. So Halloween night, Henry's mother put on her hat and lit her candles. She invited Henry and Mudge and some of Henry's friends to listen to the ghost stories. It was dark outside. A big yellow moon was in the sky. It was dark inside except for the candles and one jack-o'-lantern. Henry got close to Mudge on the floor. Henry's mother began. First, she told a story about a man who lost his head. Henry shook. His friends shook. Then she told a story about a cat. The candles made shapes on the walls, and Henry shook harder. Then Henry's mother began telling a story about a pair of shoes that went looking for someone's feet. The shoes, she said, came out only at night and they walked up and down the streets looking. You could hear them, she said softly. They went click, 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 click. Henry's mother tapped her own shoes on the floor. Click, 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 she whispered. But when she stopped tapping, Henry still heard something. Something in the room. Something in the room under the yellow moon. Henry held his breath. Something went click, 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 but faster. Henry's whole body shook. It was like someone walking faster and faster. Click, 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 click. What was it? Henry's mother bent down. Mudge, she said. Henry knew his mother was scared too if she needed Mudge. Mudge, she said again. The clicking got louder. The shoes are coming, thought Henry. He put his head in Mudge's neck. Now the clicking was louder than ever. Mudge, Henry's mother said. Stop chattering. Chattering, Henry put his ear near Mudge's mouth and Mudge's teeth went click, 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 click. It wasn't a pair of shoes. It was Mudge and he was more scared of the yellow moon in the dark room and the witch's stories than anybody else. Poor Mudge, thought Henry. Henry stopped shaking and put his arms around Mudge's big head and he held Mudge tight. Then they listened to the next story about a chair that rocked all by itself. But Mudge clicked all the way to the end. To make your jack-o'-lantern, what you'll need is you'll need a paper plate to trace, two pieces of paper, you'll need a marker or a pencil, your scissors, some clear tape, and your crayons. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make the pumpkin. So I'm going to take my paper plate and I'm going to trace a circle. So I'm going to just trace around the paper plate. There. And then I will cut that out. And I'm going to show you how I'm going to make the stem. I'm going to start at the bottom, and I'm going to come around the side, and when I get to the top, I'm going to almost make it as if I was making a heart. But I'm going to come down, and then come back up, and then over and down, and then back up. And then I'm going to finish the rest of my circle. So that way I get the stem 
on top of my pumpkin. There. Okay, so there's our pumpkin. So now the first thing we want to do is we want to color our pumpkin. So I'm going to take my orange crayon and I'm going to color my pumpkin orange. And I'm just going to go along and color it orange. We'll make it a nice ripe pumpkin. It's been in the pumpkin patch and it's all ready to go home and become a jack-o'-lantern. So there you go. You've got your orange pumpkin. Then I'm going to color the stem of my pumpkin with my brown crayon at the top. And now I'm going to make my face for my jack-o'-lantern. And I'm going to make little triangle eyes. And I'll give him a triangle nose. And I'm going to give him brown eyes. Give him the middle of his eye. And then I can make his face. Give him his jack-o'-lantern mouth. And I can give him his teeth. There you go. So now the next thing I did is I gave my jack-o'-lantern arms and legs. And this, the way I did that is I cut four little strips of, I cut four strips of paper. So we'll make one, two, actually we can only three, and four. Okay. So here we have four strips of paper. Two are going to be for his legs and two are going to be for his arms. And his arms, I'm going to make them a little bit shorter than the ones for his legs. So I'm going to cut a little bit. Okay, here are my four strips. And the first thing I did, and this is the first thing you can do, is color them brown for his arms and his legs. So here mine are all done. I did mine ahead of time. So I have my two arms, and the ones I'm going to use for my arms, I cut and made a little bit shorter than his legs. And here are the two that I have for my legs. Now to make them accordion like this, I'll show you how I did that. You take the strip of paper and you fold it back just a little bit like that. Then you flip it over and fold it back again. Then you flip it over and fold it back. And flip it over and fold it back. Flip it over, fold it back, and flip it and fold it, and flip it, and fold it, and then flip it, and fold it. And you end up with those nice accordion arms and legs, is what that's called. Alrighty, so I have my two legs and my two arms, which, like I said, I made the arms a little bit shorter. So I can take my pumpkin, I'll turn him over, and I'm going to put one arm on this side, Take my clear tape and tape it on. I'm going to put the other arm on the other side and tape it on. And then I'll take my two legs and put them here and I'll tape those on. And there you have your happy little jack-o'-lantern. This is the pumpkin that I selected when we went to pick our pumpkin and we brought it home and we cut out the jack-o'-lantern face. And then we did one more thing when we brought it home. Inside the pumpkin, and you can try this too, there's the pumpkin seeds. And this is what they look like when they're raw when you take them out of the pumpkin. When you take them out of the pumpkin, this is what they look like. And they're pale and they're kind of sticky and, and, and gooey. But what you can do with them, with, your, with a grown-up, if they say it's okay, you can take them and you can roast them. And that's what we did. And if it's okay, and your, your grown-up says that you can, you can eat them after you roast them. And they taste a little bit like popcorn, because you can put some salt on them and they're, they're tasty. 
So that's something else that you can do when you're enjoying the pumpkin that you select. Thank you children for sharing this time with us. We hope you enjoyed the stories that we shared and the crafts that we did today. If you have any ideas or suggestions for stories that you'd, you'd like to hear on Winnie and Nan, then you can send us an email. The address is winnieandnan at gmail.com. Thank you and goodbye.